this morning. I would rather have Jesus. Yeah. Silver and gold. This morning, there is a word from the Lord. As we start uh, this new series entitled The Church, Culture, and Politics, I ask that you come with your whole self. There's many things that we need uh, to hear from the Lord. And as we break this thing down, I'm praying that we all uh, come closer. We all become more like family because this is a part of the process called church. Amen. If you can yeah. this morning, yeah. you can have your writing utensil in your Bible. Uh, you have your old school or you can use your computer, uh, your phone. Journey with us over uh, to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 this morning. And as you are journeying over there again, it's good to look out and see uh, so many of you this morning. Uh, thank God uh, for Sister Claudette. I know that you're battling right now a family dynamic that I've never dealt with. But some, we're praying. You were on my mind last night. It's good to see you, sis, even in the midst of your trial, for you to join in. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to thank see you. Brother Cobb. I don't see his face right at the moment, but I know that he's bobbing and weaving. And I tell you, sometime I was talking to uh, Chief yesterday, and he said, man, I tell you, just to see how Brother Cobb is bobbing and weaving, it gives me strength. So thank you. For the cob, you still are doing ministry, even though you don't know it. Uh, people are seeing and watching you and how you're going and handling uh, through this situation. It's good to see so, so, so many of you. Oh, in the book of Ephesians, chapter four, uh, if you start at verse one, you'll find these words. And I'm using the King James rendering. Amen. Amen. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you mm -hmm. are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, enduring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. God's word for God's people. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Christ, as the head of the church, gave us a model mm -hmm. that we, uh, if we follow, will lead to unity and love. I hope that you're listening. As we start this new series, the church, culture, and politics, covering what I think is some of the most relevant parts of the New Testament, linking to us today, it gives us a very close, concise, clear picture of how the church and the family of believers ought to operate according to God's design. What is this, therefore, at the beginning of Ephesians chapter four, Paul is suffering in prison primarily for preaching the manifold wisdoms of God. He says in chapter three, apparently not a very popular wisdom, not unlike today. He opens both chapters three and four saying he is a prisoner of God. So because of this, uh, he urges us to the point of begging that we will walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which we are all called. Mm -hmm. In Colossians 1, he explains on this saying further that he hopes we would be filled with the knowledge of God's will and mm -hmm. all spiritual wisdom and understanding so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bearing fruit in every work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glory and might for all endurance and patience and joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. There are a couple of things we have to get straight right off the bat from reading and hearing that. 
Paul equates his ability, this ability to walking according to our call with knowledge of God and his will as laid out in scripture and as we see in Colossians and here in Ephesians, that is under the power of the grace of God. He gives us the gifts and abilities to do this. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Well, it tells us that we must walk this walk with all humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another mm -hmm. in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. It's easy to just skip over all of that, but it's so important. If we're going about this under our own power, by our own desires alone, it's, it's so easy to let ego get involved and we can become critical, divisive, and act as if we have so much knowledge and spiritual maturity when we don't. And that's why, and that's why we must include Jesus in everything we do. And why does he go into this thing about there being one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father, and so on? The most important thing, there's only one body and one spirit. Do you understand that the most uh, disunity or the reason we have so much disunity in the body of Christ come from people living their Christian life under their own power, with their own thoughts and desires about how church should go, how things should be done, and how we should live. Mm -hmm. Paul emphasizes that we should not do this. We are to maintain the unity of one spirit the Holy Spirit in God. And he is the one that leads us in all truth. If all Christians were in the same spirit, following the same God, under the same father, and understanding the same scripture, how easy would it be for us to have a church that is operating, that is working, and that is causing an impact in our community, all agreeing that it is how we ought to live. How easy would that be? But instead, even back in Paul's day, we get people who don't even really know what the Bible says about the church and what it ought to do. Living unbiblical traditions, going through personal agendas and desires as the rule of the day, and letting the culture influence us and not us, the culture. Now, if we go further in the book, right around verse eight, he begins to talk about gifts and how they are given in the church. First of all, they're not given according to our own measure, but to the measure that Christ sees fit to give them. Oh. We can't claim our own gifts. We don't go out here and say, well, God, I'll pick that one. I'll pick that one. That's mine. You know, sometimes we do that because we want to be glorified and edified. No, no, that's not how this works. They ought to be discerned by us as the body of Christ, the church. When I was a child, we used to have the morning bench. I know y'all think I'm young, young, but y'all mm -hmm. see, see the uh, uh, turning gray here. I do a good job of hiding it. But I'm here to tell you, <laughs> those days we used to have those things that would watch over those children and say, well, I know what you're looking to do. I know what you're looking to do, but this is what God is calling you to do. We used to, through discernment, help our children understand their calling. And if you read in John Mabiti's African philosophies uh, and religions, you will actually hear his depiction of how even in the name that we call the child, we put in them what it was that God was calling them to be. When he says he ascended, he leads us who are captives to being able to get to our higher selves. Do you know who he was talking about? When he talked about the captive, he was talking about you and I, T.Y. as mm -hmm. Queen Latifah used to mm -hmm. say back in the day, but I ain't, ain't going to get off on that. I, I know some folks think I've been just preaching in the church all my life, but that, that's not how that's been. We're all prisoners and captives who, if we follow Jesus in his ascension, we will truly take on our purpose. When he says we are the children of God, we have an inheritance with him. But mm -hmm. 
we also have to understand we must be willing, willing captives to get that inheritance. He wants us to be pure and holy people that can be yes. uh, called and live in eternity, not just here and here That's now, but he wants us to prepare ourselves to be not only the church of the day, mm -hmm. but the church when he calls us and we're, when we're called up. His love for us, he didn't just love us to love us. He loved us for a purpose. And through his love, we must obey him as John 14 says. We mm -hmm. must obey him and follow. And so Paul goes further in verse nine to make sure we understand that Christ is the ultimate authority in all this universe. And he says, okay, here's what he has given you to make the church perfect. Please listen clearly, clearly uh, and carefully to what I'm about to say. The church has some specific guidelines. Nobody chooses mm -hmm. to be an apostle, prophet, or evangelist, or shepherd, or teacher. You think I just wanted to be a preacher? You think I want to be up all night? Oh, no, Lord, that's, that's, that's not what I wanted. I tried to run. But I'm here to tell you there's some specific, specific pieces that we must do when we're called. Too many people in the church want to be leaders of the church or in the church or try to put a gender in the church. And that's called the church to stray. And we must understand that each of these parts must be accepted with patience and practice. These are given. These are people that are not just called. He said, but many are called. They were chosen. They're chosen for a reason. The apostles and prophets early in Ephesians are called the foundation of the church with Christ as the cornerstone. So these are extinct offices in the church that were already filled at the beginning of the church with apostles building on the prophets teaching in the Old Testament and all leading to the cornerstones in Christ. I hope y'all got that. I need to go back and say that again. The apostles and prophets that he's talking about first. These are, these are positions that were already filled foundationally in the church to help build that foundation as the cornerstone. And these are extinct positions. These are extinct positions in the church. Now I do have friends and I do have colleagues that may bear these titles, but I'm here to tell you, we go to passage we see these were ex these were ex uh, uh, specific positions for a specific pur purpose. This is not to say that the gifts of the apostles and prophets are extinct in and in themselves. Because like I said, I have colleagues and friends that carry these titles. But we must also understand that the Bible explains in detail purpose for how the church ought to be structured. Then comes evangelism. Mm -hmm. Because without the evangelists of the church, there is no churches. They are the church starters, the church planners. They carry the good news that he came to save this world. They're like those farmers we talked about, knowing how to go out and start tilling the ground, preparing it for the seed. And then we move on to the pastors and shepherds and the teachers, the more permanent fixtures in our local church. Most believe now. Help me, Holy Ghost. These are all the same position, evangelists, prophets, apostles, and then the pastor. And these people are called to protect and maintain the church as it was started. But God says in Jeremiah 3.15 that he will give you shepherds after his mm -hmm. own. It's always hard to be a shepherd okay. this morning. I don't know if anybody was ever raised by a pastor. It's hard to be a shepherd, to watch my father praying late three o'clock in the morning. Other folks sleep. Mm -hmm. It's hard when folk scandalize your name, but you still got to stand and bring folk together. Oh, this is not something you just go out and want to do. Many are called. Few chosen. This is a hard walk. Amen. And he calls us to feed his sheep. He said, feed my sheep. Not beat, oh, not hurt, not harm. Make sure you feed. My sheep, I feel like mm -hmm. preaching now. I'm a, let me slow down. This is a little bit more we need Amen. to talk about. Now because we read this, and as we read 1 Peter 5, it says that the elders mm -hmm. are the shepherds of the flock of God. I believe that this message that we're told 
then it's here for the day. Referring to how pastors and elders ought to take their gifts. As Timothy first, uh, first Timothy in three says, we got to be qualified. You just can't run up in this, this thing and just start talking and telling things you want to tell or watch your feet. You got to go out there and make sure you study to show yourself approved. That's right. A worker that may not be ashamed. This this is not something that we just come out and tell you. The All church right. has an infrastructure. Oh, God didn't just want us to Thank be you. out here doing what we want to do. We have to follow the model that Christ himself gave us. So it was seen from these passages that the active offices of the church today are what? Evangelists, shepherds, teachers, mm -hmm. preachers, what First Timothy refers to as overseers, elders, or bishops. And I know in our church, the AME church, we follow the Episcopal system, which we have bishops, presiding elders, and itinerant elders. But we all must be equipped, equipped for our offices. Amen. Especially those who Amen. are teaching and preaching the word of God. This, this, this is something that we must uh, investigate and understand in today's church, oftentimes we're missing. All these things have a purpose to build up the body of Christ, the church, until we all obtain that unity and faith and that knowledge right. of that God is the ever reigning king. This is what right. we're supposed to be leading the church to. And the beautiful thing about the AME church, we have what's called a class leader system. Now, we don't see this necessarily in the book, but what it helps us to set up is the fact that we ought to be measuring ourselves. How effective after being taught, after being fed, are we going out and building the church and not being men and women tossed and driven, tossed to and fro by the ways of this deceitful world, carrying around all kinds of uh, wild doctrine by human cunningness and craftiness, trying to deceive one another. But we ought to be trying to reach and teach one another about who God Thank is. You, Jesus. Brother, speaking the truth, the truth in love, we ought to be growing every right. day and in every way. We ought to be bringing folks to Christ, not bringing them away. We ought to be causing folks to be strengthened not to be weakened, Thank not to be in a Thank place you. where they feel like I have no help. People ought to be feeling like, my God, my God, my God, how did I make it without this God of Thank yours? You. How did I survive? Mm -hmm. There ought to be two questions left now. Two questions to ask you, the church. Is this mm -hmm. the model we're using in our church? And is this the purpose that we're striving towards? And if so, are we walking in the way that is prescribed here to accomplish that goal? Or have we fallen away? Have we fallen away? Now, many, many, many in the church would say that was the early church. That was for back then. That was a couple thousand years ago, we've had thousands of years of experience and innovation to do what we want to do. Oh, we, we have evolved now. We, 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 we're on another level now. And the culture itself is so different. Actually, it's not. Ephesus would have been just like us, the society of today. Minus some of our technologies, they were affluent, very divisive, and extremely idolatrous. Worshiping everything but God. I, I think y'all y'all might not have heard me. Right. They mm -hmm. were very affluent, very divisive, and extremely idolatrous and worshiped everything but God. Boy, preach. And as far as an experience and innovation, well, you can be the judge of that. God has been blessing man and woman forever. He is never not given each season, each generation, what they need to succeed. Do you see how God has allowed in our day and time? COVID came, but we had social media that was planted a decade before. And at our fingertips, 
Facebooks, the Instagrams, the YouTube, the Twitters, the Snapchats, the list goes on. There's, there's things my son knows I don't know. But even when we are apart, God has put things in place that we can connect even when the world tries to separate us. I'm so glad y'all y'all got to understand. I'm glad God's going to make a way. He's going to make a way that his people are able to come together. Mm -hmm. Others mm -hmm. might not care. They'll say, I like the church just the way that it is. Why well, get caught up in how uh, we're doing things? But I'm telling you about this. Jesus, ask Jesus how he feels about it. Can we ask Jesus about how he feels about the church that he suffered and died for and left instructions for? And we are here doing our own thing. The key thing in all of this is the truth and full teaching of the scriptures must have our submission must have our submission. He gave it to us, but we must submit to it. Not necessarily submission to a pastor or, or a preacher, because I had no heaven or hell mm -hmm. to put you in. But I'm talking about submission to his moral standing, submission to his word, his instruction. That's right. Completely submitting to what he called us to do. And we can go back. When he said, ye do error, not knowing the scripture of the power of God. He wasn't talking about my word. He was talking about the words of his prophets. So we must mm -hmm. be biblically qualified if we want to go out here and do his work. I feel the church right. is in general misunderstanding of many of these things. We've fallen down. We've fallen down. But I'm here to tell you in one final state. Church is here. He established it. He gave it to us. He gave us the instructions. And the church, mm -hmm. if we are born again, if we are born again, we put away the falsehood. We put away uh, uh, ill speaking about our neighbor. We put away the things that separate us. We may still sometimes get angry, mm -hmm. but we don't sin and let that take us over. We may have sometimes opportunities that try to knock and the devil trying to push and deceive us, but we don't steal from our brother. We don't pull down our sister. We work together and share. We bring to the church our best selves. We have self-control, controlling this thing called a tongue of ours. We don't bring venom. We bring peace because God has Amen. created a space Thank for us you. who are believers to come together Glory. in a place called Glory. the church. The church, mm -hmm. the church, that's the church. A place where we that's all that. can come and find a little love, a little peace, a little bit of Jesus and some hope. Glory. This morning, I'm praying <clears throat> that you're coming Thank to you. the church, that you're coming to the church, not with your own will, but as Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but your will. Right. Not my okay. will, but your will. Right. I know it may seem right. hard, it may be bitter, but not my will, your will. All right. So mm. I'm about to say, Thank you. I want to go where the thunder don't roll, there well, trouble winds don't blow. Oh, I want to go where the rain don't pour. When I leave this world, to return no more. I just want to go where there's peace and harmony, where the little yes, yes, yes. won't be afraid of walking the street. I want to go where there's joy, peace of mind, in that land oh, yes, yes. where there is no more dying. I just want to go where the thunder don't roll, 
there well trouble winds don't blow oh i wanna go where the yeah. rain don't pour when i leave this world to return no more down no the low, there's nothing but pain and war when my life is over to the glory i want to go i want to see the creator for you and me up in heaven is where i want to be i just want to go where the thunder don't roll there well trouble winds don't blow oh, oh, oh i want to go where the rain don't pour when i leave this world to return no more this morning church i want to go amen amen to a place. Thank you, amen i want to go mm -hmm. to a place where i can have church and i mean church every day i don't have to worry about amen. the cares of this world Glory. throughout the week the working the, the struggling the striving trying to get by the robin peter to pay paul i want to go to a place right. where i can truly mm -hmm. release all the pains of this world i want to go to that yeah, place right. but he said i'm preparing a place for you mm. if it were not so i would not have told you this morning we open the doors of the church the mm. church doors are open if there's one i Thank bid you. you to come he was born, he lived, he died just yeah. for you right now. I don't care what race, color, nationality, sex, religion, or age you are. He died for each and every one of us on this line. Yeah, Amen. But to join this church, this universal yeah. church, this universal church, you must be born again. Oh, and this morning, we oh, offer to you an opportunity to come right now. I don't know if that's you. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're going through. But these are the words I need you to say if you want to be a part of this church. Not, not just Bethel Carlisle. This is something that we got something else for Bethel Carlisle in a minute. But if you want to be a part of the church, the universal church, we read about in the Apostles' Creed. I need you to say these words, and I'm going to say them slowly with you. Follow me on this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you are the one that died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn away from every sin and invite you in my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my savior. Amen. Amen. And amen. That was for the person who was looking to give their life to Christ. And this morning, if that was you, so that we know who you are and we can pray with you, pray for you. I want you to text us or email us at the information on the screen. If you can't see it, you can text the number 864-201-3920. Again, 864-201-3920. Simply text the words found faith. Found faith and we'll know that's what you came this morning for and we will help you and support you on the next stage of your journey now to what we talked about today we have some folks who have given their life but they don't have a church family they don't have a family into which they can lean on they can pray with they can sing with they can commune and worship with now that's you this morning I'm here to tell you that he's already given us a model. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name. See, we want his presence. See, some are looking around, where is God? Why is God? I don't see him. I don't feel him. Have you truly gotten together with your brothers and sisters in his name? That's how we get his presence. Oftentimes, again, we come with our own agenda. We wonder why, well, God, why is things not happening? Why are things not moving? We ought to step back and look. Are we following his purpose? 
or we after our own agendas, or we after our own purposes. If we're following him, oh, the church will handle itself. He gave us the model. And if you want to be a part of a church like that, Brother Carlisle, we are on our way. We ask for you to do this this morning. If you're not a part of a church family, you've given your life, but you want to be a part of something where you can grow, you can lean, you can have somebody to call. This week, when I was going through what I was going through, I'm so happy. And I won't name names, but you know who you are. People who I've shared what was going on, praying with us, continuing to pray, locking arms with us, these kinds of things are what being a part of a church family is. And it doesn't matter, uh, matter how many folk you deal with, but somebody calls you, you share what's going through, uh, what you're going through. Others who share with me what they're going through. That's a part of the process. When we're on each other's mind and heart, we let our church family know. You don't know what a kind word may do for someone. You don't know what your words may do for someone who's struggling this week or the last week. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. Mm -hmm. When you're part of a church family, you have someone that sometimes you can just lean on just a little bit. You, 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 you have to have this. As the Bible says, you have two. Two can help keep each other warm. Two can help keep each other encouraged and hopeful. Two, it's hard to do that by yourself. Mm -hmm. Second eight, uh, Genesis 2 and 18 says, it's not good. And I know we were dealing with a patriarchal system back then, so it says, it's not good that man shall be alone. But I'm gonna tell you today, it's not good that man nor woman shall be alone. You need somebody. You need somebody to support mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So this morning, if that is you, we offer to you an opportunity to join Bethel Carlisle as a church member to join our family. If that's you, you can simply text again, same number, same email address, 864-201-3920. Email address Bethel A-M-E Carlisle at gmail.com. Bethel A-M-E Carlisle at gmail.com. You can text or email us simply the words found family, found family family. We just want to make this very simple. We don't want you to you know, think I got to write a dissertation of how I'm going to join the church or how, how I came to Christ. No, all you need to do is text these simple words. We'll know what you're talking about. And someone from the ministry will get with you 